Hello. Hello. You walked straight past me earlier, even though I called out your name. Did I really? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Uh, you're Fletcher, aren't you? Yes, I'm Fletcher. When they thought it was you when you walked past earlier, we all got very excited. You're one of that lot, aren't you? With David Magus and all of them? Yes, I guess that's true. It was all before our time, but we're all experts on your lot. Wendy recognized you instantly, just from your photos. Huh. It must get to you after a while, traveling all the time. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. Incidentally, maybe you can help me out. Who lives in that house up there? Uh, the Petersons. They're an old house. They'll probably remember you. Ugh, oh, the Petersons. Shit. Or you could stay at our cottage. Not Fletcher, is it? Well, might as well come on in. Go ahead, take a nap, and don't mind us. It's Fletcher, all right. My God, he's aged. Well, Fletcher, I think we need to talk. I've actually been thinking of you for many, many years. You own this conversation to me. We used to know each other. I used to idolize you. Everything you said was an answer. And now you're just a bunch of old rags. I wanted to tell you something. You ruined my life. I used to love touching you. And now... You, you have like... Have parasites on your head. It's disgusting to even touch you now. Why don't you join us now, you? You got a lot of explaining to do. I've heard what you said, and you're being unfair. I never claim to have all the answers. Look at you, you pathetic pieces of shit. God damn it, sitting here in the cold all alone, afraid of everything in the outside world, afraid of Magus, afraid of me, afraid of anybody who wanders in here from all those years ago because we made a couple of mistakes. Big deal. But those young people, they haven't yet sunk so low, despite all the lethargy you've been preaching at them through the years. I'm gonna go talk to them now, and I'm gonna undo all your sorry efforts. Wendy is going to be so pleased. She was sure it was you when you went past earlier. By now, she'll have guessed she was right, because I've been away this long, and she'll have gathered all the villagers, they're all waiting for you. Well, you know, I've changed my mind on quite a few things. So, you're here. Hi, Roger. I heard you were living here. I was going to come look you up, but I had a meeting with some young people first, and I thought as soon as that's over, I'll go, I'll go up, uh, look you up and... Don't worry, Fletcher. 
I know how busy you are, but we have to talk. Chew over old times. When you last saw me, at school I mean, I suppose I was a rather feeble specimen, but that all changed when I was 14, 15. I really toughened up, became quite the leader type. I suppose I've let myself go a bit. But you? <laughs> Compared to you? Compared to you, I'm an athlete. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, Fletcher, but you're just a scrawny little tramp, aren't you? Anyway, after you left, I saw through you. I saw the way you used some small advantages of age and confidence, and you did whatever you could to humiliate me. And you knew it, and you kept doing it. You were really a nasty, nasty little so-and-so. Maybe you've changed. Maybe you're not that person anymore, Fletcher. People can change. I accept that. So, how long have you been living here anyway? Oh, seven years or so. But it's you people talk about. You, Fletcher. They think about you, they talk about you, and the young ones, the ones who've never seen you, they tend to idolize you the most. Ah, and I suppose that's why you've come back now, huh? To capitalize on that. To get what some of you would call self-respect. I suppose you're right, Roger. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, now I don't know where to go. The fact of the matter is, these young people had arranged a reception for me with tea and cakes. And maybe, if my luck was in, a nice stew. Don't worry, you'll get there. Although if that girl told you that it was going to be a short walk, I'd say it's a little misleading. It's not really even a walk, it's a bus ride and not a short one at that. I'm sure that your young people will wait for you. They have so little else to believe in these days. Come on. You'll have to wait there, be a little lonely, but eventually a bus will come. And when it does, it'll be filled with warmth and light and happy people eating and drinking. They'll probably share some food with you. And maybe they'll be singing. Some of the bus drivers like that. Others don't allow it. Anyway, good to see you, Fletcher. Good luck. <laughs>